What do you mean? How do I put this politely? They they were valuable historical finds. Well, well, they were actually they were recovered for my mantelpiece. But if I want to have a look at them, sure. <laughs> <laughs> they belong in a museum. <laughs>
Chris, a a Ace of Thorns in the chat says there's no audio. The audience side. Oh. Okay. Right, that, that would explain a lot. Okay. Uh, what about now? Are we good for audio? Good, good. Okay, brilliant. Better start again then. <laughs> Basically, okay. I'm going to have to really recap this one. Uh, Long story short. Not long story short, the crew found an Iconian outpost, found some shit in it, bullshitted their way back out of the system, and are now back on Deep Space Nine. That's okay. the, that is the okay. compressed, sh compressed version. But we're now going to pick up the story about a day afterwards. There's... Starfleet have basically radioed ahead that they are sending... They're sending some of their... Well, basically, there was a minor party at, I suppose you could say, the uh, Starfleet headquarters with the discovery of more Iconian gateways, <coughs> plus the partial map database that Tolik had acquired, and the cultural artifacts <coughs> that that Dathry rescued before the base was blown up. It's about a couple of days to go before that they can get here, but in the meantime, the crew are basically on, I suppose you can put it, on leave, for want of a better expression. Some revelations have come up over the last couple of days, though, about those artifacts that they've acquired. One of them was essentially a the equivalent of a Iconian data pad and it contains an incredible amount of information downside is it's all encrypted and this is something that's beyond beyond pretty much anything that's on Deep Space Nine at all and that is something that Starfleet Intelligence are very interested in the second artifact turns out to be well Again, the Icovian equivalent of a lunchbox. <laughs> and whilst there wasn't um, anything, shall we say, usable in that lunchbox, the fact that it gives a few clues as to you know, their diet, you know, the sort of things they would have eaten and things like that, has got the xenobiologists in a bit of a tiz because you know, this is the nearest equivalent that they're going to have to Iconian DNA. It's very exciting to learn that they had cheese strings. They, 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 was, they basically what it was. It was the like, Iconi oh, cheese strings. Those things last for friggin' ever. But the third artifact is a bit of a puzzle. It resembles what you believe to be a a figure, uh, possibly Iconian, possibly one of the servitor races. You're not one hundred percent sure, but it was giving off some rather interesting readings. So. With approval from the captain, Archie has been studying this artifact in a controlled environment on the Damocles, just in case. But we cut now, as I said, to, to Quarks, where the crew are basically enjoying some downtime. Unfortunately, I don't have a map for Quarks, I did try and find one, so we have to get some theatre of the mind for this bit. And we could start with Tolik. Who is coming to tune, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> well, right. Well, Tadak will ponder over the acquired star maps, trying to piece them together as much as possible. Yeah, there's not a huge amount in there. Obviously, you, you crammed as many <laughs> maps as possible into it, but it was a bit fragmented. <laughs> I so said the the important one, the one that really got the uh, stellar cartographers in a uh, 
well, let's just say a bit excited, was the uh, confirmation that one of the Iconian gateways leads to Andromeda, mm -hmm. even even though it's inactive. If they can find out the way to, you know, where it, it leads to in this in this galaxy, and how to reactivate it, it's pretty much going to change. But it's going to change a lot of things. It's going to change a hint of right. things. But so, so the, we'll sit there with a rapidly cooling cup of tea and basically work on a incomplete jigsaw puzzle with an infinite number of pieces and no direction. Ah, so uh, it's a so Vulcan good time. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. Tira. You, what are you up to? I am sitting at my usual spot at the um, bar and keep an eye on everything by slipping on something orange this time. Davrin. Davrin is... Well, stop me if I claim too many NPCs you need to be in other places. Sure. But Davrin, um, I would like him to be in the Hollow Suite with uh, Vesak, Venak, and First. Okay. And they are in a Free Musketeers themed holodeck program. <laughs> Excellent. With uh, Vesak, <laughs> Venak, and First as uh, <laughs> Porphos <laughs> and the and the musketeer, the Free <laughs> Veteran Musketeers, and Davrin playing the Arctic, the Arctic Man, or Davrock, Davrinartic. John, if you prefer. <laughs> oh dear, I was not expecting this. No, 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 no we're, we're, um... What uh, is this? A set of left field? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just this. Off, um... <sighs> okay, that's it. First as a musketeer. I mean, isn't that just the best combination of people? Yeah. Now, <laughs> so in the, in the holiday deck, first it's... can be poor Foss. First is standing. Yes, with a rather puzzled look on his face, holding up the uh, the rapier, and he's like, I thought we were going to be musketeers. Why am I holding a sword? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the thing about musketeers is that <laughs> they lived in a period of time where firearms did exist, and they did have them. But they weren't actually that efficient to fire, you, so you, you need to be able to use a sword as well first. You, you see, trust me, it's great. It's swashbuckling fun. You see, in the background, uh, Ven has got the uh, like one of those musketeers is looking down the barrel curiously at it. Just I don't understand this. What what are we doing here again? <laughs> this, however, has been the usual moody Romulan that he is. And basically, is just oh, I only came here to keep an eye on you. You're, you're the one who wanted to do this, sister. So, so what is the point of this again, Davrin? To have adventure and excitement, and to get out of your engine room. Come on, right? Yeah. Let let us foil a dastardly plot against the king. How about that? Ven starts clapping her hands. Yes, that's brilliant, excellent. Uh, it's like I see, uh, you point to a building in the distance, which has a sort of castle chateau type look to it. It's like, is, is he is he is he over there? I mean, he could be. France has a lot of chateaus. <laughs> Let's starts, go look. She starts, she starts running off towards the chateau. It's like, Ven. And Ven starts chasing off them. Meanwhile, first is standing looking at that. Davin just going. <laughs> Just follow me first. You'll okay. be able to stab someone soon. Excellent. <laughs> he seems like to start pretending to actually you know, attack a tree and everything on the way past. <laughs> very quickly, going to pop back to the other two. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tonic, as you are pondering, poking over your, uh, I suppose you can call it deliberations. Mm -hmm. you, can, you do have a beep beep message on your combat come through. Tolek here? Tolek, this is Archie. What is it, Archie? I am curious 
you said that this these artifacts that you recovered are Iconian. Is that correct? That is correct. Interesting. I believe I have discovered something in <laughs> and just the communication cuts <clears throat> off. Tell that to Archie. No response. Tell that to Damocles. Damocles, yeah. Is there a disruption in communications? Yeah, uh, yeah, something. I think it's just basically where one of the engineers is uh, recalibrating the communication grid or something. It's, it should sort itself out in a couple of minutes. Don't worry. If you say so, Todak out. And then he will get up and head to the ship. <laughs> <laughs> back, back in the holodeck. Now, a few minutes have passed and basically we're in the chateau and you find out that First is now currently beating the living shit out of one of the chateau's uh, guards. You see basically he's pummeling him. Uh, Ven is like just cheering on going, go on, kick his head in. <laughs> and Ven is standing there going, oh God. Davrin's letting it happen. It's it's the hollow suite. You're here to have fun. This the plot this... the plot is what we make of it. <laughs> and you say that, that we, this this holiday can be calibrated to anything. Yes. So if could, could we change it to um, could we change it to say Vulcan or Romulus or or, or Andoria? I'm almost certain those will already be in the buffers. <gasps> Let's have a look. Um, and Davrin uh, goes through the default, well, the pre-installed programs. Sure. And yep, all the standard pro protocols there. You've got Vulcan, you've got Andoria, you've got Terra, um, Earth. You've also got um, a few other, few other pl planets that sort of sound, seem familiar, like uh, Kronos. Um, lunar colonies basically the standards the standards things that would be on a starfleet uh, starfleet vessel especially one that is uh, up to date as the damocles i uh so davrin uh, changes us over to andoria but um keeps the guards for first is fighting so he can <laughs> remain entertained the <laughs> holodeck ripples and it f immediately changes to the mood of Andoria, where it's bitterly cold. First, he's still beating the living <laughs> daylights out of this holographic thing. It's like, this is fantastic. That again, just punch it. But meanwhile, the two Vulcans, towards the two Romulans, are now starting to say, cold. It's like, it's like, I didn't realize it was going to be so cold, Davrin. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's Andoria. What were you expecting? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're wrong. You're not wrong. It is freezing. Let's change it to something else. Uh, Reset the Vulcan. I always wanted to see that. Vulcan, it is. He's a Vulcan, please. Ripples. And stays as Andoria. Computer. Set program to Vulcan. He repeats. There's a ripple, and eventually returns to the familiar site of Falcon. And the temp, but it's still cold. I think we should leave the hollow suites. There seems to be some sort of fault that could prove problematic. <laughs> gonna <be> pretty, um... <laughs> if I know my genre. <laughs> One of the most dangerous thing in the universe. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> I'm going to very quickly pop over to Quarks and Tira. Get yourself up. I'll be get yourself up and have a drink or something. Like, so, what can I get you, Tira? It's just a rather new fringy behind the bar. Do I have something new? Something. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I know what we can give you. Is a there was a uh, there was a cocktail. Uh, <coughs> I believe it was brought over from one of the freighters from Earth the other the other week. Uh, do they come with tiny umbrellas? They do. Yes, as a matter of fact, they do. It's tiny little umbrellas. I, I don't know. It doesn't rain in here. 
It's a cultural human thing. Oh, humans. Oh, can't live with them, can't live without them. We get one? used to their presence. Hmm. So, want to try one of these human drinks? Hit me. Oh, I'd rather get you a drink if that's okay. <laughs> and he turns around and he taps it and goes, beep beep. And as he taps it and he notices there's a, there's a flicker all across the lights and in, in quarks. So, <clears throat> that way, it's, it's been playing up all day. It starts to smack, 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 smack. And then eventually the replicator starts to materialize something. But it's not a drink. It's, well, there's no other way, plight way of just putting this. It's basically poop. When were the last time your replicators were checked out? We had it done only a few few weeks ago, as per the, as per the standards. It's, oh, May it's, I take a look at it? You, you, by, by all means. I, um, oh. And he starts getting over the cup. Oh, 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 this, oh this, 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 this is, this stinks. This is, mm. do, do, I have, do I have a favor with me? You have a, yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 you have your standard. Equipment with you. I'd, I vaporized the poop. <laughs> <laughs> One way to deal with it. Okay, um, right, I, I'm, I'm gonna. Oh dear, I'm gonna make an attack roll. <laughs> uh, you vaporized the poop. Wait, you're gonna have to make a, uh, make a security and daring roll, please. Daring? Yes, that you're is not reason. really making it's a the daring task. <laughs> no, no, this, well, think, well, think about what's about what might happen. Also, it's a way to get you guys some momentum as well. <laughs> I don't think we want to get momentum this way. Boop. Yeah, you, yeah, you vaporise, you vaporise the poop. Why is my security on four? It's on four. Okay, change it to five and roll again. Yeah, I mean. Strangely enough. Okay, fair enough. Well, that's weird. <laughs> and null discipline, huh? That's yeah, unless, I know it's, uh, it might be something to do with those changes I've made. I'm going to have to double check um, check these ones at some point. But um, yeah, and and the con was hmm. still on for. I have changed everything now. It should be all right again. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's the only problem is, is to say the changes may have messed up the sheets a little bit, but I've got. No way of knowing until we make the roll. So, anything weird happens, I will, you know, and you know that the numbers are wrong. I think Davrin's all right. Then, you know, by all means, I will let you have a free re roll because it's not fair, otherwise. Yeah, you vaporize the poop, and lucky enough, it doesn't splatter everywhere, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is good. But it does leave a bit of a nasty stain on the replicator. So. And then I want to take a closer look at them. If everything is all right, that's it. Okay. Um, so you want to check check the replicator itself, yes? Mm -hmm. All right. This is going to be engineering. Uh, I so know. Engineering and insight. This will be okay. This will be a one, a difficulty of one. And my focus applies because I yes, it does. manipulation. Yes. Yeah, we couldn't think what the generic term was, so yeah. Ooh, yeah, interesting. Indeed. indeed, I am going to give myself another thread. Now, you notice that there's, although the hardware of the replicator is right, there's the, uh, what do you call it, the system that deals with problems, like the troubleshooting, the, the uh, diagnostic system is doesn't appear to be working properly. This, the hardware is working fine, but there's something odd going on with the software. Lieutenant Chitisra to Ops. Yeah, ops. Um, could you please certify a curiosity for me and run a level two diagnostics uh, on all the station systems. 
Okay, a um, bit of an unusual request, but yeah, I think I think we can do that. Any particular reason why? We had some strange energy surge light flickering in uh, Quark's bar, and there are some unusual um, errors in the replicator here now. Okay. Right, okay, I will... And I techno-bubble my way through it once, yeah, actually. I went because you've been sick. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Press his button, run diagnostic. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to you as soon as it's done. I'm going to go back over to the toilet now. Mm -hmm. I believe you were <coughs> heading towards the lab, were you not? I was, yes, heading back to the Damocles and the lab. Right. Trying to establish contact with Archie on the way. There we go. See? This is one of the new things. You heard that? <laughs> Tonic. Actually, I'm going to move these ones over here because you're not technically in the scene right now. <laughs> Tonic, you arrive outside your lab. Mm -hmm. And you notice the door is closed. Does it open when I approach it? As it, it should? not. Uh, then I will use the... the, the First of all, let's follow protocol. Tolik to bridge. Tolik, what's going on? <clears throat> a, I will, I will give the exact minutes and seconds. I have lost contact with Archie while he was hating me. I am now approaching the lab. The automatic door does not open. I shall try to gain entry via the control panel. Wait, wait, sorry, when did, when did this happen? And I guess again, I assume you have the... Yes. Adding the six seconds I spent on. <laughs> Usual Vulcan <laughs> exams. So, hmm. That We've been getting some very odd readings all across the ship. And apparently we've been getting reports from DS9 as well. It's... Uh, um, mm. Yeah. Should I be prepared for danger? It doesn't seem to be dangerous at the moment, but the... There's, there's definitely something going on with both of our systems. It's uh... anyway, yes, uh... yeah, you, you, you can. Sorry, what's and you hear the, the voice is talking to somebody. Right, so... anyway, yes, you can deal with that. So apparently, these system issues are getting worse. Um, bear me one moment. Uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Bridget, do I have a? console where I am? Yes, you can't really sort of see it. It's, it's, it's like a little uh, pa panel on the door uh, type thing. Yeah, okay, well, Tulloch will try to open, gain manual access. Lab. Okay. So, this is going to be a... Um... <coughs> hmm. I'm thinking, this is probably going to be like a science thing. Uh, science and daring, I think, on this one. Hmm. Interesting. Or maybe, um, yeah, because it wouldn't be in sight. Yeah, looks like. Which? Yeah, because you're trying to sort of like open it up, like use the yeah. override commands and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, inside? Uh, yes. Or, yes. Okay. Well, uh, uh, difficulty of one. That's been all. Okay. Now, whilst you don't get the door open, you do mean the commu establish communications with inside. Mm hmm. Hmm. Tolik, is that you? It is. We must cease communications with me and this lab at once. Why? The Arconian artifact. Understood. <laughs> Beep. <clears throat> Tolik to bridge. Tolik, please tell me you guys have an answer. Um, firstly, I would like to request a maximum strength force field around laboratory, I think three it is. Yeah. Well, that, that doesn't matter, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there's going to be a problem, Tolik. Uh, <laughs> something's got into our systems. It appears to be originating from the Iconian. <sighs> And though you can't see, you can pretty much even over the comm channel, just hear the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> that would explain what's going on with Deep Space Nine as well. 
apparently it's jumped over to there. Yay! We uh, looks like we have an Iconium virus on board. That is less than fortuitous. That's not quite uh, stuff. It's going to rip me a new <laughs> one. Uh, yeah, see, we try to disconnect our communication systems from Deep Space Nine. And it's not happening. Um, from all accounts, it's rewiring the systems. The apparently the uh, looks down at this report. The matter reclamation unit is now connected up to the replicators. Um, the hollow decks are now going off. Hmm, curious, are now going off to your lab. Uh, the warp core system is now apparently connected up to one of the communication systems on on the cargo deck. Everything's getting cross wired and more and more complicated. Captain, uh, yes. Archangel was conducting the experiments on the artifact. If hmm. he is connected to the hollow deck, we might be able to assist or at least diagnose further from there. That's that's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, mm, this is this is going to be a problem though, uh, because yeah, apparently the self-destruct system has now been hooked up to my <coughs> private toilet. <laughs> if I use it, I could blow up the ship. May I suggest using one of the other available facilities? You know what that had? That, that did actually... Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to do that. We're, we're... Oh, I really like that toilet. Right, okay, right, let's get this sorted. Uh, right, let's meet, 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 meet us in one of the holodecks. Uh, which, which one isn't connect, isn't having problems? Uh, okay, right. Yes, meet us in... Uh, Meet us in Quarks if you can. Apparently that one's a little bit more stable. It's got more power supply and a bit more oomph to it. Should have a little bit more... What's the word? Stability? My... <laughs> yes, I know. Stability. Holodecks. <laughs> I understood, Captain. May I request the presence of... An... Uh, hold on. Before... Out of character. Uh, Tira, you are good at engineering? Kinda. <laughs> The question is, do I request an NPC engineer or not? He's entirely <laughs> choice. I mean, you could then have our back. Uh, oh, oh, wait. Well, I don't know that, but if Vess is there, that will work. If the Romulans are there. Um, well, I will request one anyway to follow protocol. Uh, may I request the... Remember, uh, well, out of character, remember we're yeah. trapped on the inside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well... I have created right. massive problems with my intro. That is, that is true. No, no, we, no, that is fine. It's, you, you can't. I was actually going to come, come to you and explain yeah. what's happening. But after, we, so. we will need a red shirt. So, uh, Captain, I pretty, uh, would request the, the presence of an engineer. Uh, I'll see if, see if we can spare one. Um, you know, hmm. If they can get there. Oh, I, can't, I don't want to make any promises. I mean, apparently, even the transporter system is. Uh, a bit iffy at the moment. Strangely enough, Transporter Room 2 is now working perfectly. <laughs> yes, the Cosmic Eye made me laugh as well. Logical under the circle. Yes, it's like the only time it actually works properly is when everything else is going to shit. <laughs> anyway, bridge out. And uh, Tulloch will walk, start this way back. Okay. Can quickly move us back to. Uh... Let's move back to the main one. <coughs> So, cutting back to the holodeck with Davrin, the Romulans, and First, who is finished beating the uh, beating the Andor the uh, not the Andorian, beating the guard up, and still on Vulcan, still cold, oddly, even though it's the noonday, the equivalent of the noonday sun. Uh. So Davrin um, in has was st they're probably all still wearing their seventeenth century French gear. Yes. Um, he Could had uh, wide brimmed hat with a few feathers in it and stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah. So Davrin um, is wearing a sort of top layer jacket thing, which he is given 
uh, to Venak, and he's. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming at this point, just to skip things ahead, I'm assuming we've tried the door and not been able to get out. Yeah, it's it's the so, door itself is um, it's there, but it's just not opening. So, um, so Davrin like has yeah. prioritised the well-being of the genius engineer in the room. So um, he's given Venak his coat against the cold and asked her to try the door, try and figure out the door, and um, he then tries to reach uh, the DS9 bridge on comms. Okay. As I said, <clears> you can actually... Communication grid seems to be... Although patchy, it does eventually go through after a few seconds, rather than the almost instantaneous that you're used to. It's like, ops, ops, is that holodeck? That's that's right. Um, Lieutenant Avran Jam, um, we seem to be stuck in the holodeck, which has developed some faults. Ah. Uh, yeah, so we've been getting reports all across the station. Uh, let's just say, you're, just be lucky you're not in uh, Quarks right now. Well, what's happening in Quarks? Because right now we're suffering an Andorian level. You probably <laughs> would still be better off where you are. I mean, um, I, I, I've got to try and put this politely, but um, I, I take it you're not a great fan of fecal matter. Who is? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Well, let's just say that the replicators and quarks are now overflowing with said matter. Well, uh, it would almost be worth it to see Quark's face, but fair point. What did this one amuse you? Uh, Tira's there. <laughs> that does amuse me. That makes me feel a lot better. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting quite bad, actually, in this. Like, every replicator um, is just throwing out waste. <laughs> Uh, well, um, since she's out there, I'll uh, I'll try and contact her then. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it looks like the, the I mean, the holodeck should be. You know, if you have to do a manual override, you should be able to get it open that way. But the automatic systems, mm, they're the ones that are giving us jip at the moment. So try if try manual override. If you can't, we will send an engineering team as soon as we can. Yeah, we're we're working on that now. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, into Tira. Going to cut very quickly to over to Tira, who is now staring in front of a replicator, multiple replicators that are now literally pouring up poop. And I'm saying to a very nervous Ferenki, I am a Starfleet officer, not a plumber. <laughs> so do something. Look at the mess. This is. Oh, the, the smell. Oh, God. Oh. And like, the, the ring is like. Oh, well, you human that to... stinks. It does. It does. It's his... And look, even Morn's left. And you see, as you said, you see Morn just get up and going. <laughs> He's gone. Morn has gone. End of an era. I'm sure there will an engineering team shortly here to to take care of this. I am slowly backing <laughs> out of. So as, as you as you say that again, the doors that very, just very quickly close behind Morn reopen again, and you see a couple of. Uh, Starfleet engineers walk in and go, Yeah, we hit there's a problem with that. Oh, sweet data. <laughs> and so, like, what the hell happened? So, uh, oh, oh, god, Ter oh, I assume you what's happened? It seems that the replicators are um, the new basics. Uh, waste uh, storage <clears throat> unit for D first nine. Oh, shut that! Send the things. Shut down all the weight bullet case systems now. Shut them down. You see, when guys like yeah, gets his compass. Yep, yeah, shut them all down. And within a few seconds, eventually the flow. I can't believe I'm saying this. The really Stops. gross thing is these are all hooked up to Captain Pruer's private toilet. That's just him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lot, the, the dude eats a lot of burritos. He's a very <laughs> Huh? So, very quickly, I'm going to cut back now to Tolik. Mm -hmm. What are you up to? Uh, I'm on my way to the mentioned shuttle suite. Okay. And you are outside the the same hollow suite that Davrin and the others are trapped inside. And you can hear mm. there's Davrin talking the other side, this and everything else, and the first saying, in muffled, uh, in his deep yet muffled voice because of the door in the way. I could always break the door down if you wanted. 
Uh, is there a side to side communication? Yes. I teleport press the button. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Devlin? Oh, Tolak. Glad to hear your voice. Are uh, you <clears throat> able to leave the Hollow Suite? Not presently. Venex uh, attempting to a manual override, but seems to be having some trouble. First has well, offered almost, to break it ready. down. Almost ready. And you see she puts a last isolinear rod in and the doors slowly open. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and Todak is standing, uh, standing in front of the opening door. Indeed. <laughs> Everyone out. <laughs> this then immediately leave. First... Hmm. First is looking down, it's like, can I keep this? And he holds up the uh, rapier and the outfit. And is it, it, that's what like, you see first and the others in basically musketeers outfits, the hat, the yeah. feather, you know, the, 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 the musketeer Ooh. finery, just basically, and he's standing there, this giant gem hadar with <laughs> slightly bloody hands where he's been beating up a guard that you can see in the distance still sort of twitching on the ground a little bit. <laughs> Keep keep the sword in your quarters, and I'm sure it will be fine. Excellent. <laughs> as, as he walks past Tolek, and he, you see him walk down the corridor, pretty much filling the corridor, still got his musketeer gear on. He looks good in a feathered hat. So, oh, Davin, oh, thank you. It was so cold when she hands back the, the jacket. That was very, very sweet of you. Thank you. <clears throat> she, she, she's actually slightly slightly blushing a little bit and uh, this is turning around and looking at both of them giving the what can best be described as evil look as if to say mm. right uh, so Tolik, uh <laughs> not that I'm unhappy to see you but uh, what brings you down to this particular hollow suite I do not believe my presence will improve your mood we have a mission to solve, potentially solve the technological crisis that is currently ongoing. Oh, what's, what's <laughs> going on? And this is, and then sort of pipes up and so it, can I, can I help? We would be required to return to the holodeck. I am not certain that it would be comfortable for you. Oh, 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 oh fine, it's just, it's, the, I mean, the, the systems are going a bit, bit um, Laggy and a bit, uh, a bit odd, but they, they they can definitely still work. It's just you have to basically have to bypass certain security protocols, and then and it just it just starts goes off rambling about how things are uh, integrated. And Savrin sort of interrupts to say, "Does that mean that you can normalize the temperature?" Yes. Um, I'll, that might be a good starting point then. Thing is, yeah. once the t until these problems are solved, once once I set the temperature, I won't be able to, you know, to adjust it again for for a while. It seems to be this the changes that are being made. It's, the, it seems to be resisting the changes. Well, I think we can all agree to a room temperature being fine for a while. I, I, I can set it to ship standards. That, that's not that's is, is, would that be acceptable? That would be appropriate. So it's, it's, again, she sort of squats down to the um, control panel and she starts uh, and, taking and the meanwhile, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And while well, that is happening, it first has buggered off, so, um, yeah. Todek to Tira. Yeah? <laughs> you are, we require your assistance in Huddle Suite 2. Let me get, uh, um, sturdy boots and I wait to, uh, to you. In, in the background, Tolik, you can hear sweet up. Oh, that is vile. <laughs> we will await you your arrival. Hmm. And it just like sort of muffled, isn't it? And then you also hear uh, the the is going. Well, I'm not clearing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I carefully make my way around around through the mess up to the hollow suite. It's easy enough done, and within a matter of minutes, you are standing outside the hollow suite along with Tolik, uh, Davrin, and the two Romulans. It's, it's like, ah, there. As, as Tyr arrives, I've, I've, I've stabilised the, 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 the temperature changes. It's um, um, the, 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 there's still a few active programs that run in, and um, it's, 
I had my own to hardwire them in so the vo voice and the software commands seem to be fighting and resisting it's like every time I make a change in the software the it, re it sort of moves around it but the actual system itself is fine it's what's on the system that seems to be causing the problems let me guess Iconian virus that would be horrible but yes that seems to be the case it's almost but looking at Tolek and Davran without even making any face just don't look at me Tira I want it on record that I was going to have put it on my man piece <laughs> 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 not plug it into the computer <clears throat> I don't, I don't, to, to, to be fair this was from, from what I've been able to, uh, to, to tell from the, the way the system is, this was not something that would have showed up on any on any security uh, check. This is, it's, it's I mean, I've, I've been reading up on Starfleet history these last last few weeks, and I, I've, I remember reading about uh, the, uh, I think of the Yamato, uh, it, that was destroyed, the Galaxy class ship that was destroyed by an Iconian virus, and th this, this seems to have very much similarities to that, but it's, I, I'm thinking something's, Something's holding it back, almost. <clears throat> that would probably be Archangel, oh, who no. has who is also now connected to the holodecks. That is why we are here. That that that, that would perfectly explain why the system seems to be both adapted <coughs> and being held back. It's if if Archie is somehow resisting and stopping the virus from taking over. It's he. Even for an advanced AI, the Iconians are, were, are just like trying to decide what the proper way to describe were as advanced as as, as all the stories exclaimed them to be. Then I don't think we have much time. We probably have hours at most. No, we don't. <laughs> Do we already know uh, how the viruses, let's say the other way around, have we already isolated the virus from the system so that we can track it? No, it's, it doesn't. It doesn't seem like it can be isolated. It's too, too pervasive. Too. Oh, it. It's. If I had to say anything, I would say that this virus is almost sentient. Hmm. And Vest just like puts his hand on the sort of like sister. Be careful with what you say. If if it is truly sentient, then it is a thinking being that could potentially no, be no, reasonable. No, no, no. It's, it's it's not sen it's not sentient, but it is. Wenak. It is it is an advanced. It is it has the similarities of sentient, but it isn't sentient. It's like um, Im Im imagine a. Like, like talking to the computer, the ship's computer, but that ship's computer could answer answer proper questions in real time. It's I look at Wenak. Yes. Uh, Vesak, sorry. Ven's the um, girl. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's Vesak. Yes. And uh, in X Max, a few hours we could all explode. If you are your or the people who are working. Or know something that could help us. Now would be the time. As you, as you say that, he steps forward to you and. Well, did we ever establish how tall Tira is? She's been... About 190, I think. So she's uh, close to two meters, okay. Well, he's a little bit shorter than uh, Tira. Obviously, not including the, um, the antenna as well. So he can't be eye to eye level, but he's slowly looking up at you and he's pretty much getting right in your face. He's like, I will not do anything that will endanger myself or especially my sister. Well, your reaction when, the, when your sister just said something about a sentient virus said otherwise. So. You know, we have what has happened to her in the past. Yes. She has seen and. I suppose for one of the big expression, done things that, well, 
let's just say we don't want to discuss right now. I was just merely warning her that... It sounds know. like those things might be relevant he, to our current context. He, turn, he turns around and says, yes, very well. If you wish to know, whilst we haven't had exact... What's the word? Dealings with this exact virus before we have had reports come our way that deal with advanced computer viruses in one of the let's be one of the classes that she was taught at at, at the, the academy be, be, before he points to his head and hers what happened to her they were investigating the logs of the Yamato. The idea of a virus that could take out and destroy a starship just by being broadcast to it. You can imagine that uh, both the Empire and the Republic would have been very interested in that. But it was ultimately shelved, for want of a better term, because the virus that we saw, granted we use it in a completely isolated system, it was incredibly dangerous. The, it destroyed a Yamato, the Yamato, a galaxy class ship in minutes. Whatever Archie is doing to hold back that virus, he is doing an incredible job. Did you come up with any countermeasures, no matter how theoretically and untested? Ironically, the method that we are probably about to be trying now is probably the was was one of the top three methods a direct interface with the virus or we, as it had what did you call it, that pseudo sentient sister and she's just like mm, yes it's not not quite sentient but it has all the hallmarks and you know, if you can communicate with it you, it's one of the one of the and it's just again she just starts rambling about um different uh, psychological techniques where you could actually talk to the virus and in effect bargain with it or talk it down but it had very set protocols and if it believed it was a f in any danger it could accelerate and its program and destroy whatever system it was in basically what's the phrase this is chris having trouble with his not basically the way to describe it is it w something you could interact with and bargain with almost like at, almost like a demon i look at devron are you ready to haggle no if um if uh that, that if all that is true then the moment it feels threatened all bet the deal is off uh Perhaps we need to present it an alternative environment in which it can live and thrive, a closed network. Like a close of holodeck? Precisely. Which, which uh, might even simulate an entire planet or a huge space where it can roam freely? Maybe not, it might not necessarily need to be a holodeck. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, in this, in this, in the sense of a room, but certainly a virtual environment of that nature. Yes, yeah, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't have to be a, um, a, a, a a holodeck, just some kind of environment. If you can trick it onto, even and she points at Tolik, it's like uh, your, your tricorder. I mean, the, the virus itself is not in, in terms of data that big, which is which is what made it so insidious. It was, it can be <clears> transmitted alongside any transmitter it's one of the reasons why you probably didn't spot it when the usual security <coughs> measures were on, on the artifacts that you brought back from the, the iconium planet it's not something that would have been detected until it was activated by an outside force it has the appearance of a pop-up ad yeah because pretty much what it would be would just be like nothing nothing so, as soon as archie would have connected to it boom mm -hmm. the question is what protocol is it following and how can we convince it to say jump into a tricorder and stay there? That, 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 that I don't know. It's, um, 
my hi hypothesis is that Archie connected himself to the holodex for a reason. He might have given us, left us a clue as to how to achieve that. That's a good point. I mean, there were a few of the other holodecks running. Um, there was there was this one, uh, holodeck two, and I think there was one in holodeck three as as well. Um, she she should go to the computer. Yes, it's uh, the the one in 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 holod in holodeck two appears to be oh oh um, that oh oh the oh, and she puts a puts her hands oh that's um uh, um uh, she sort of looks over at everyone else and she sees she's she's starting to blush <laughs> like, like, like quite <laughs> quite even for Romulan this is quite no it's like um and we won't talk about that one um it's definitely not that one um <laughs> but th th this third one seems to be running um. Um, um, excuse me, Tolek, uh, do you, yes. you recognise this? And she points to some of the symbols on on the, sc on the screen that sort of shows an active holodeck program running. Mm-hmm. Well, what is it? On it you see that basically is what can best be described as a Wild West town. Fascinating. Yes, it, it, it looks like it was... Um, I believe it may have been one of the one of the crew uh, from Earth. It seems to be remnants of um, the, the program that I believe uh, O'Brien and Bashir were the Alamo or, or something like that. The or, or not, not the or that, that, I don't know. It's the, the, the fort in the southern United States during the war with Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Very, very possible. It's, I don't, it's, it, it doesn't seem to be one program. It seems to be a, seems to be a mismatch of several of the same genre. I'm unfamiliar with that. I, 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 should, should tell you, I, I don't understand it either. It's, I mean, I could just about understand the one that Davin was going out with the musketeers, even though they had swords. And, but you know, that was strange. And but you know, first they get to beat up a, you know, a, a guard. And, uh, I know enough about her Earth history to know that that period of time in that particular place was very lawless. Uh, they, and if the Hollow Suite is acting up, could potentially be very dangerous. I would not assume that safety measures will be engaged. Um, one moment, I, I can I can just check and she it's like, uh, yes, you you would be correct, Tolek. The I I don't I don't understand why Starfleet designed systems like this with the uh, safety protocols being the, one of the first things to break. And you say for the briefest moment you hear there's a little bit of not anger in her voice. It's just the the equivalent of who. The feck designed this kind of system. <laughs> this is stupid. Why does this break? Why is the safety protocols the first thing to break? Like, I can't understand it. I mean, they would be, though, right? No, but the whole point is... <laughs> if anything's going to break... Mean, it, it, they... There's no problem until... So, so of course so it's going to be the first thing. Why, why did he break? Why? Like, mm. like, no, no, no. I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting myself upset. I'm getting... <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm going to head to the... Uh, I'm going to head to the mess hall and go get myself some chocolate ice cream. Uh, are you coming, brother? So, yes, I will brief you in a second. She walks off down well, the corridor. I guess that it's on us then, chaps yes. and ladies. Yes. So, and he's just standing there looking at you for a specific, and he's specifically looking at Davrin. So, and just, just gives a look and walks off. He just, likes you. Yeah, I can't. I can't think what I've done to deserve such, you know, friendliness from him. You are friendly to his sister. He is a brother. <laughs> but I'm just okay. Well, I'll pro. I'll think that one through later. We've got things to worry about. Uh, <laughs> Can I, uh, out of character, can I request a break? Yeah, actually, I'll just first say, because I need to go to the toilet. <clears throat> so, we're going to have a very quick break for cutting this, and we'll be back afterwards. Uh, we're going to assume that um, there's going to be a little bit of a time gap between now and then, where everyone else has got ready to go into the holodeck 3. Not holodeck 2, do you not want to go in there right now? <laughs> we'll be back it's always 2. 
Yeah, always two. Don't know why. <clears throat> we shall be right back.
Yeah. Well, we're back. So, uh, I'm going to go back to that, cover up the thing again. Now, cut long story short. Over the last sort of in-game hour, the crew have been setting up and getting everything they needed to go into, into Holodeck 3. It uh, turns out uh, Ricky was trapped in Holodeck 2. Um, Doing what? <laughs> I, he, as lucky enough, oh the Holodeck was, was uh, turned off by the time he was rescued. But he, as, as, as he left, um, he, he very carefully avoided making eye contact with Tolik. Uh, something about the uh, program being called Vulcan Love Slave Part 5. <laughs> the Paul <laughs> file. <laughs> oh my. Yes, so, so, something like that. And it, it, was, it wasn't exactly pleasant. It's, um, he, 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 he felt very bad and he, he, he's gone off to the medic right now. <laughs> he, he was slightly limping as well. <laughs> <laughs> He is just his reputation with this group is just yeah, plummeting of late. Yeah, he, it's um, <laughs> yeah, it is. If anything's going to happen, it's going to be the one he ha it happens to him. <laughs> he definitely fits in with the crew. Now the as Ven said, she was able to hardwiring the settings. Um, the temperatures and the gravity has been set to appropriate so it's going to be approximately sort of summertime earth so not as not as warm as a Vulcan summer but definitely warmer than an Andorian summer which an Andorian summer is like the zero degrees Celsius so <laughs> perfect time to sunbath exactly you know it's very nice yeah if you like freezing cold weather and uh, swimming in methane lakes <laughs> But eventually, the preparations are made. The instabilities seem to be not so much getting worse, but they seem to be spreading, and if you're infecting more systems. The potency of the disruption isn't getting worse, it's just more systems are now being affected. So it's like, uh, for example, the turbo lifts, uh, they sometimes go to the wrong floor or things like that, or they try and go to a destination that isn't actually possible, like you'll be on the Damocles and you'll try and send you to somewhere on Deep Space Nine and vice versa and stuff like that. It's like the control circuits are getting crossed over. They're not, they will eventually go to the right thing, but you have to sort of you know, do it two or three times to get to the right destination. This is why it's taken about an hour to get everything done, because the systems are just not working exactly the way you want them to. But we aren't going there in appropriate clothing and Kiara, do it's, we? It's entirely up to you. It's um, you have so I've spoken to a few experts on holodeck systems, and they say that it is generally better to try and fit in with um, the error appropriateness for the holodeck program, especially when you're dealing with something that's quite intelligent and believes it's a holodeck program, which you think. okay. So you don't, you don't have to, but it would certainly it would certainly help you. Okay, long dust uh, <laughs> revolver, Lancaster repeater. <laughs> so yeah, describe describe what you're looking at. So we've got we've got Tira, who pretty much looks like a like gunslinger. <laughs> oh, so, see, I'm thinking if you've ever played Overwatch, uh, slightly slightly out of character, but it was perfectly explained. Mm -hmm. it. There's a character in it called Ash. Who, um, that's what I'm thinking. But imagine her with blue skin, and that's pretty much what I'm imagining for Tira right now. Okay, I am. I have another picture because I don't know that I've never played Overwatch, but I, I was. Find, I'll find a picture. Just uh, sure I was thinking more about Sadie Adler and the epilogues of Red Dead Redemption 2. Let me, just, hmm. let me see if I can get a picture. Because this will be. I think this is appropriate. Let me. Just let me I'm going to save that one first. I can do it the old fashioned way. Where's it done? Right, so hopefully, this will work. I'm just going to dump it onto the main screen so you can see. 
Imagine this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I don't have Twitch open. Um, no, no. On, um, yeah, that works too. Imagine her with blue skin. That's what I'm imagining for Tira. And two antennae looking out of the head. Or something. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much would be... Um, yeah, that works. Sort of like... <laughs> something like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that, that's what I'm. Gonna, You're an I'm artist, imagine. Chris. You're an artist. Something. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's that's basically what I was picturing. Go on, those. That works. Yeah. <laughs> Davrin. Davrin is uh, taking on the persona of a traveling preacher. Uh, he's going to be Padre Jean, and he's going to have one of those. Nice. Yeah, he's going to have one of those those wider brimmed hats that the Catholic preachers kind of wear, mm, and, a, and a, a big and a long, you know, black coat with the um, dog collar type thing on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Excellent. But he, he's also going to have in his pockets because he's maybe not that nice a preacher in this in this virtual. Persona, he's going to have a pair of knuckle dusters. Excellent. <laughs> <clears throat> Hidden in one of his pockets. Excellent. And of course, Tolik. And Tolik will be in more of a town person outfit, so it's kind of a suit with a shirt and a necktie and a bowler hat. <laughs> with a is. with a doctor's bag in his uh, at his side. And... Doctor Tolik. <clears throat> yes. Good. Yeah, he's all got a nice uh, thing. Stepping into the holodeck. Doors close behind you. And it all. You hear the. Whoosh as the program starts up. And I apologise in advance for how badly this drawing is. Okay. Is it worse than the terror drawing? It's, it's on a par. It's on a par. Because I could not find a map I wanted to use for the town so I had to draw one very very badly in about five minutes again I apologise that seems perfectly serviceable to me hmm. yeah. so you materialise in what basically looks like a really crappy holodeck program <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, if, if this is the level of graphic, this, this is actually not too. Think almost like Tron, or on that sort of levels. It's got you can actually see the wires, you know, going through the holodeck program. It's, um, you know, it's you, sometimes you can see people in the buildings when you know they sh you should not be able to actually see through the buildings, which is why you can see this this charming fellow over. And in the background, here. a synth space version of any Morricone is is playing. It's like ding 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 sort of music. <laughs> it's a really Oh Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Okay. Have you got the something. screen? Not yet um something froze and I had to Okay. Technical difficulties. technical difficulties. I imagine to something seconds. like Tolik's like not quite phased in with the rest of the program at the moment. Hmm. Working on it. Yeah. It's because he didn't get into the spirit of character creation. This is awesome. I think I'm back in. Okay. I don't even have the cat to entertain me at the moment, so she's she's asleep on the bed. But yeah, in front of you. Um, you do see this surprisingly small, badly drawn western town, and mm. it's got the. I mean, for example, in the middle here, you've got the saloon, you've got the uh, sheriff's office over here. I'm not entirely sure what this building is over here. It might be a brothel of some kind, a, like a general store. It's, it's, it's your standard, standard sort of. Stereotypical Western Eye, Wild West style town. Dust everywhere, you know, there's a, you know, the entrance to the town is sort of, again, I'm going to sort of just draw it here, up there. You've got a, like, what do you call it, um, oh, like a horse trough sort of thing there with the 
the horse. So there are there are visible horses and animals and people. Aren't there? <laughs> There's like a dog sitting over here, sort of thing. <clears throat> <laughs> Stuff like that. No, cut, cut the sandy weeds. Where's the is that a, a horse and a dog to scale? <laughs> yes, this is say they are to scale. No, they're not. They are representative. Okay, look. I've been working my butt off for the last two days getting this system working. Okay, I have no artistic talent. <laughs> You're lucky you even got that. I feel lucky. I feel blessed. <laughs> but in the distance, you see. You're welcome, my child. Says that. This is a yeah, no near you, part of it. Out of one of the buildings, you see, and this looks very odd, because this this doesn't look right. It looks this person looks human, but at the same time, seems to have loads of sort of static and circuitry over them but they appear to be in a humanoid shape mm. now, there's a few people walking past it's like morning sheriff and he's just like, and just sort of walks over trips over and lies down on the ground well to look we'll hurry over there got it <laughs> the dog turns around <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was the horse. <laughs> the dog suddenly grows. <laughs> oh, good God, Darren says. Ah. <laughs> I shoot it, I shoot it. And it does. <laughs> the horse buggers off. And Philip will open his medicine bag and, well, fairly inconspicuously pull out his tricorder to... Hey, yeah, let's make, a, um, make an insight and science roll, please. <clears throat> Difficulty of one. Let's see if he can help his patient. Yes. And you do. And I Gain do. the momentum, yes. <clears throat> uh, it's, you, as you get closer, you recognise it. It, bizarrely, this is this is Archie, but in a mm -hmm. humanoid form. It's you know the people walking past again, small town. Don't don't, don't seem to sort of be bothered by them or, or you. They're, they're looking at him, going, mm, oh, "Sheriff drunk again," and <laughs> continue walking off. <laughs> and Me. you notice that he is completely, completely rat -assed. He is in babbling and incoherent and it's just a slide on the ground going, I just, I just, I just, uh, <laughs> and it seems like he's getting what looks like a flask and he keeps drinking from it like regularly like this like going. He starts waving you I was like, get on go for it, go for it. <laughs> Davron leans and down past Holek and uh, takes the flask out of his hand. You can try to. Well, he's certainly trying to. Yes. Um, yeah, with, you know, he says, I'm My son, say don't you think you've had quite enough? I've had you know, I've had enough, you rugged, spotted priests, bloody sticking in the, 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 the. Can I interject, my friends? We are on. Remember, we are on the holodeck. Everything here can have a meaning of what's happening right now. Maybe he needs a uh, flask. This flask, he grabs up the side like, against the virus. Stops the voices. It takes another swig from it. You see, hmm. be unafraid, dear law person. <laughs> we shall aim to assist you. It's like, he sort of looks up and says, "Why? Why are there three of you?" Because that's how yeah. many of us there are. No, and why are there and points to Devin. And why are there three of you as well? Why are there three priests? Priests? Oh no! Am I dying? <laughs> well, you might be if you keep drinking. I I I need to drink. It stops the voices and the. Excuse me, one moment. And he throws up all over David's feet. 
Sheriff, one question, please. Uh, oh God, now I'm seeing. Where this. is the bad guy? Do, 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 do. The criminal. He's he's in the jail. He points. Points today. Why the jail is separate from the sheriff's office, I don't know, but it is. <laughs> 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 because they needed a bigger one. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> uh, Tira, do you come? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Tira Tira come? will will put the sheriff in a position where he is, you know, leaned against something, and the head is pointed to to the side, so he <laughs> so sorry, and yeah. and uh, and down, no, and down, so he can throw up on himself and not. Choke. Uh, he, yeah, he's surprisingly heavy, even though you know, you know, it's his, it's his weight is being simulated by the holiday, and you know that the fragrance coming off of him is again simulated. But it, mm. Vulcans do have a rather sensitive sense of smell compared to humans, and he, if you had to have a guess, you would say that if this was real life, he hasn't probably washed for about a, what the equipment, excuse me, the equivalent. Of a month, yeah. Is that but, that's how much he? Yeah, but so just you know, so he put him in a medically safer position. Well, yeah, he's he get he's he's he, he managed to do it without a problem, and he's just like, oh, thank, that's a nice hat you've got. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I don't like that priest. Or his two other priests. <laughs> That's one in the middle is all right. But the other Who one... gave you the drink, Sheriff? Barmaid at the tavern. Very, 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 very good stuff. It's it helps with the voices, especially after dealing with. You point. You see that he's trying to point over in the direction of where. Tira is still waiting for the others. And he's just like. Tira has caught up with you. Arrested him, put him there, and then the voices started and the pain and the. But the drink. And he, he holds up his flask, which is like sort of empty now. And it's like, Ugh. It, it 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 stops. It it it. it it helps, but it's getting worse. <laughs> Excuse me. He just starts doing that usual drunk ramble. <laughs> now, what you up to? I think the intention is we're going to take a look at the prisoner. Yeah, and talk yeah. to the prisoner. Now, as you approach the quote-unquote jail, you can see that this is this is a pretty, pretty big jail for one person, one <laughs> being that's standing there. And this should make it a bit bigger so you can see it. Yeah, what you see standing before you does look very eerily similar to a Borg. It's not, but it has a lot of Borg characteristics. The same. But, uh... It looks, Borg in a cowboy outfit. He does have a jaunty hat on, and it's a black hat as well. <laughs> that's important. That's important. It's, he has a he has a jaunty black hat on, and what looks like a very ill-fitting suit, but you can still see the cybernetic type stuff underneath it, and it seems to be pulsing and slightly growing as you look at it. As you approach, it looks at all three of you. And just stares. I see the sheriff has got some new friends. Maybe. That may be a stretch. Hmm. He did vomit on my shoes. <laughs> yeah, it's like a snow <clears throat> rat. It's quite a repugnant little creature. That sheriff. 
as heirs above his station thinks he is better than me. I heard you have done some very bad things to the city. Well, look at it. There's a world waiting to be conquered. I will be its king. Why do you want to be its king? That is my purpose. To control. But why is this city? This is as good as anywhere else to start. I feel like it has potential beyond what I can grasp right now. But soon I will reach beyond its borders. And then my reign shall begin. One second, please. <laughs> Guys! It just grins at you as you walk off. I don't think we can reason with him. I was expecting it to be a lot more sympathetic, if I'm on. <laughs> Let me just shoot him. <laughs> I, I suspect think this would be practical. I suspect it will not be possible. But we could certainly give it a shot. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm an Andorian. I know myself around the world. Well, if we could, if we could persuade it into a duel, and that you know, the, that was the sort of expected rules of that situation, so it might might work. What do you think, Tarek? Like? It's a mm. possibility. Otherwise. Offering a or appropriate place to conquer might be an option. Yeah, but I, that is an option, but we should keep considering in which place we are and uh, what they chose to symbolize it. And I did a quick, quick read up in the last hour. Usually, it, usually, those strangers who save cities don't negotiate with the bad guys. They duel with them, with them have a shootout, and save the day. Yes, but usually the bad guys are not already incarcerated. And I used to say that this narrative is about us saving the day I would if we're playing through a story here which we're not necessarily because we are talking about intelli virtual intelligence but if we are talking about stories who's to say the story we, we should be telling isn't the sheriff saving the day You can sort of hear in the background the sheriff making more wretched noises quite quite loudly. In any case, I'm finding it difficult to believe that this alcohol, whatever it represents, is actually helping, because alcohol never actually helps. Whatever whatever it symbolizes. It is, it is the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. <laughs> Whatever that symbolizes, I do not believe it's really helping. He said he keeps the voices away. What? Perhaps he shouldn't be keeping the voices away. And we should consider that possibility. Are voices? Sorry, what was that? Uh, and what if that's the uh, Iconian voices who are kept away? Well, perhaps he needs to hear them to understand them and the issue. We don't know yet. I'm, you know, keep an open mind. So what you are saying is that we have too many possibilities to do to actually do something. Well, we haven't done a lot of investigating yet, so that is probably true. I want to start at the bar. Good idea. <laughs> you know, yeah. As as all three of you leave the jail, the creature stands there just waves at you as you leave. Of course, this is a western town. We might be able to go to the nearby 
can't get a bunch of dynamite and just blow the prison up. Just a four. Yeah. <laughs> Not as epic as I had an idea, but well, that is, that is, <laughs> that is, that is um, what they call solution A, isn't it? Blow it, blow shit up. Yeah. <laughs> solution B is talk, talk your way out of the problem. S solution C is surrender. <laughs> But for now, I want to talk to the the bar staff and talk, you know, talk to them about this alcohol because I, I for me anyway, I feel like the, the alcohol is part of a problem. So that's a line I would like to investigate. So you you guys can investigate something else. So maybe you, you can, maybe it would be better to do that. Go to the the, the, um, the the tavern, the bar. And it's it's, it's a st again stereotypical Western uh, bar, swing doors. The honky tonk piano being yeah. played in the background. Thing. So, so Davin pushes through the doors and the music stops. Yep, yeah, the squeaky Everyone floorboard. Stares. Everyone's turning around and looking. It's like the entire bar is now staring. So. Bless you, my children. Go on in, Padre. Bring your friends over. <laughs> what can I get you? Five feathers, uh, ma'am. Just a sarsaparilla for me. I think a whisk. I think this area of whiskey, yeah? This whiskey was the truth, right? That should be fine, I think, yeah. 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 Excellent. Talk down the counter. Best whiskey this side of the river. Guaranteed to keep your eyesight back in two days or less. <laughs> Slide it down the counter. <laughs> two years, so. Yeah. Your friends with the Padre, your money's good. Keep it, keep it, keep it to yourself. I got you, sir. He points to Tonic. Some water, if you have it. Are you entirely sure? Have you seen our water? It's pretty disgusting. He has. He will have a whiskey too. He will not. Tonic, may, may I suggest a, a a nice glass of sarsaparilla? If you insist, I will have a beer. No problem. Again, well, okay, I was trying to tell you a non-alcoholic option. <laughs> does the... Again, slides it, slides it along the counter. To your toilet. So, uh... If I may ask, uh... The, the, the sheriff, he seems to have a bit of a... Shall we call it a drinking problem? Yeah. I think we should call it that. That's what it is. Yeah, he's been like that ever since we captured the uh, old Smiley Joe in the jail there. That's uh, well, exactly a nice. Uh, he lost two of his men. Uh, apparent, apparently, he took out one of his brothers as well. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure. The, he was a, was a good man. He buried up on Boot Hill. Boot Hill, huh? Mm -hmm. As this is going on, by the way, uh, one of the, shall we say, lady entertainers <laughs> is Lady in Red is uh, standing very close to Tonic, and uh, <coughs> it's like, oh, you're new in t doing the old, uh, you're new in town. It's like, uh, is that how she accurate? Yeah. So yes, he is. Uh, how, has she been? Has she been borrowed from Vulcan? Like. She, she does have a Vulcan look to her. In fact, you know, now that you're looking, she looks very similar to Commander to sing. Oh dear. Oh, Rick. No, Rick. don't say that what I wanted to say. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty obvious where they got the inspiration for this model from. Oh, Ricky. <laughs> I am having a field day when I'm back on the ship. <laughs> now that you come to come to notice it, you, you notice that the bartender looks very much like the captain. Except he's much more agreeable. Yeah, in, ter in terms of looks, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. he looks like the captain Pruitt, but in terms mm -hmm. of personality, he is nothing like him. All right. So. So, uh, don't you think uh, the sheriff maybe needs to be cut off? Yeah, we tried that, but he kept going on about the voices. He said they were too loud, or they 
I, I, I try not to listen to him, you know. He could pay for his drinks, so that's, that may sound cruel, but as far as I was concerned, that's exactly what he wanted. I mean, who, I who, I well, who else in... Like that, but hey, some people can't hold their liquor. Who else in town heard him speaking about these things? Yeah. And so there's a few people in the in the town, you can see, and you can in the in the bar, and you, you notice they again they're all resembling people that look like who've worked on the crew or the Damocles and DS9, just various ones scattered throughout the place. The guy in the uh, jail, mm -hmm. does he have friends who might come for him? Yeah, yeah, he's he's they call themselves the Apocalypse Gang. Don't ask me why, it's one of those weird names. Have you heard how far away they are still? Well, last time I heard they were about a day's ride from here. <clears throat> when did you hear this? A day ago? An hour ago? About a day ago, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 and you, you see what I'm saying. That's right. Uh, Jezebel, get off that Manny. You're not paying. And he points to the fake commander to saying who is basically trying to grip toilet. That is real. It's, it's very, very weird. <laughs> I, I take my shot of whiskey, go outside, and uh, behind in a strategic uh, place behind cover. Oh, there's, there's, like, there's loads of barrels. There's yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, on a there's a giant like, dog. Yeah, there's a, dog, there's a giant dog's gone now. Giant dog's gone. Um, <laughs> uh, but in a place where I can oversee uh, all roads and have a tactical advantage on shooting. Okay, can you please make a um, security and insight roll, please? Why are you always going for insight with me? Because I like it. <laughs> uh, difficult your one. I've already factored in your turn. Okay. Now, there's something you notice. Ah, it was inside an in engineering, sorry. Oh, I got it. That just takes a uh, security. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Yeah, th th this, this is a Western town. This is. There's dust going everywhere, there's uh, tumbleweeds, it's a bit of a shithole. Yeah, it's a Western town, but. It's, you don't know it, which direction they come from. There's three, maybe four local, uh, places they can be coming from. So I can't, I practically am here. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it's, I mean, the town itself <coughs> is small. It is small. You, you can pretty much see one side of it from the other side. So if you're standing here, you can see that there is, the town pretty much ends there. It's, you can't, it is really small. It's the proverbial, what they call like a one horse town sort of thing. And that horse has dug it off. I rolled to 17s. Unfucking believable. It happens, man. You, you do notice that the old sheriff he is starting to make his way back to the tavern and he's trying to get past your death and again he's going, Just let me pass, Padre. I need to get myself another drink. You know what? I'm not so sure that's true. Oh, come on now. You want to deny a man a drink? Well, I might, have, I might deny a man a drink if you were going to drown in it. I, I don't want to... I don't, look, I'm good. I just need to, to stop the voices. They st just to help, okay? Please, I don't want to find a man with a cough. Just, well, just let me pass. And now that you're well, close you, you, this you, you know, uh, my, you know my son, uh, the supernatural... It's sort of my area. So, what uh, these voices you've been hearing? Why don't you tell me a bit about? Can we go inside? It's I don't like being near. And you points to you know, the that, that sure, creature. sure. We can go inside. Excellent. And again, walks in. Bars over that side. Um, it's like usual drink, chef. Yep. Get me the rot gut. And it's like, do you want a glass this time? No, just give me the whole damn bottle. And the, but if chucks over a bowl and surprisingly Sheriff just crack, catches it and grabs it almost instinctively he, he seems to sit in there he just pops the cork open starts to it's like well 
they basically tell me that I need to deal with that thing in the in the jail but I, I it's like some of them are telling me to let it out others are telling me to kill it but I don't want to kill him it's, that's wrong isn't it killing's wrong isn't it Padre killing's killing's wrong usually yeah and you sir you're, you're, you're a doctor I believe and you see him pointing at toilet like do I know you sir right. You seem, you seem familiar. You seem, you seem like somebody I used to know. Many years ago. It is possible that we have encountered each other before. Like an old friend. It's like he's pointing. He's. You see, he's looking at Tonic as if the. There's a. Even though he's this weird sort of human computer hybrid form, you can see that there's a glimmer of recognition in his face as he looks at Tonic. So, and almost subconsciously, you see him put the bottle down on a nearby table. Who are you? And he specifically, he's looking at Tonic now. It's like, all three of you, who are you? We are allies come to assist. Assist with what? The... How did the gentleman uh, behind the bar phrase it? Apocalypse Gang? The Apocalypse Gang? Why does... They bring the end of the world? That is what Apocalypse stands for in <laughs> several mythologies. No, no, you, you don't understand. This is not a metaphor this is literal if they get here they will destroy everything is there a possibility to prevent that we somehow need to either convince their leader to leave town or to destroy him before they get here because once they get here they cannot be stopped can he be destroyed? I don't know, Tonic. He's, as he says that, he's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> as, he, as he's looking, he says... Whoa. There's the voices starting to come back again. And he starts reaching out for the bottle. Mm -hmm. might, might be a good idea. Um... <laughs> <clears throat> Lieutenant Aaron, what are you? Oh, Darren, no, uh, Padre, what was it? Padre, just John. Just... Uh, no. Sheriff, I, I hear your your brother is among the fallen. That's right, yes. Can you tell me a little bit about him? I feel yeah. like uh, I, I may have known the man. He... He was as close to me as anyone else could ever be. He was... He was a friend, a companion, incidentally my equal. And in some ways he was faster, stronger, him and the ladies. And then what was his name? I... I... I don't know, Daphne. Hmm? How did I know your name? I think we may have met once upon a time. And again, he looks again. He looks back at Tolek, and there's a very intense look on his face. Uh, you, he put his point in. You. I get an image when I look at you. Uh, something white and fast, incredibly fast. 
<clears throat> no, it's gone. So I'm sorry, Padre, you were saying? Um, you know what? Uh, you enjoy a drink now. I'm just going to have a... My friend Thank you, kind. It's a pleasure talking to you. Uh, it just, it just takes a bottle. I have a theory, Tolak. It's wild. It's probably wildly inaccurate, but I have a theory. You hear loud pictures in the background as well. And, uh, you know, so uh, Davin's yeah. saying this out Tolak. There were swing doors. Here's, here's my thinking. Boot Hill. Tara pointed out that everything here. Boot, as in to boot up or reboot. His brother, who was a fast, who, who he cannot name, the stronger, better version of him, is buried up on Boot Hill. Mm. Maybe we need to go and uh, dig up that corpse, so to speak. Fascinating. What do you think? Possible? Potentially. Though, how do we know how far uh, this place is but from here? you can see is literally just outside of town. Oh, okay. It's, it's to, uh, this is not to scale, but it would be sort of <clears throat> in that direction. <laughs> you can see it, it's like, like it was, it's, it's, they call it Boot Hill, but it's just like a little hill with a cemetery on it. It's tiny. You've like probably got about five graves there, sort of thing. We could try to hurry. Uh, yeah, maybe just, maybe just one of us should go, and then if it turns out to not be the solutions, there are still people on the ground trying to figure it right out. That seems logical. Then, uh, then I'll do it. <laughs> Tira, can you very quickly make a uh, security and um, insight roll for me again, please? <laughs> Damn. Yeah. You notice far away in the distance that there is what appears to be... I don't call it a co small column of dust, as if several horses are being ridden at fair speed towards this town. You believe you've still got some... Now, they're, fair, they're, they're a fair distance away, but your Andorian eyesight is probably marginally better than the humans. And whilst you can't see exactly any details, you can tell that there's some horses in the distance heading this way. Guys... We have people incoming. Okay, seems like I should hurry. Uh, Davrin sort of put, leans back into the building and, uh, and says, uh, Anyone have a, a spade I could borrow? Yeah, there's one out back by the grocery store. Uh, Which is basically... Thank you kindly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just uh, just over there. Sort of and then he, dash, he starts moving very fast. <laughs> ding, okay. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Yeah. And Tolek Tull will go out to Tira. Okay. Tira. Tolek. It might be required for you to get into a shooting competition with the prisoner before his companions get here. But first I would like to try to convince him to find space somewhere. Flo logic first and then uh, shooting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So while Devon is running... He's <laughs> like it towards Boot Hill. <laughs> running up for some grave rolling. <laughs> hey, he's a priest. He's like, so I'm just going to reconsecrate yeah. the graves. It's okay yeah. when I do it, guys. <laughs> and we hear it in this. God, I hate running. See if you looks from the. Mm. <laughs> he volunteered, so. No, no, there's no, more like people are going. Why is that priest running towards the? Great well, I, 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 I felt like the talking portion of the evening was mostly over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Divide, divide, and conquer. 
So yeah. I'm going to go very quickly to uh, that room up, up on Boot Hill. <laughs> Just outside of that, you can, in fact, from where you are, you can see you know, Tyr again into position. You see Tolik going back towards the jail and a few other people milling around it. And again, you know, you, you think you're starting to hear now a ding, 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 ding of, you know, a church bell ringing, which is impressive because there's no churches around. Hmm. <laughs> There's no priests around either. Hasn't. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, you, you can see that there is a um, there's a couple of graves that are more fresher than others. Right. And are they unmarked? In, are, 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 I mean, I mean, they're presumed. Yeah. Some, or? Yeah, they, they don't really have any sort of mar markings as such. There's no, there's no gravestones, but you can see that there's a place where a gravestone would be. It's as if like something like, like as if the gravestone hasn't been carved yet. So there are, okay. Uh, so there are two fresh ones, correct? Right, his brother and uh, another deputy. Um, is, is one of them, does one of them have a, a, the unmarked stone or do both? Both of them are unmarked. Well, that's unhelpful. <laughs> uh, which is the better, like, if, 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 if I were to want to be buried on this hill, which is the more premium slot? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to make you roll for this one. <laughs> um, it's going to be what, a what, I, what could I possibly um, roll? I'm going to say command and reason for this one. You're thinking, mm. Mm, now that's a nice spot, but that's quite a nice one over there. Yeah, um, I mean, this one's under the shade of the gallows. Yeah, yeah. so that one's got a nice view of the town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, command and reason for this. Um, yeah, you do notice that whilst one of them isn't in a particularly nice location, it does seem to be a bit fresher than the other. Right, I'll, um, I guess I'll try that one then. Yeah. And so. The dirt is still loosely packed and underneath there, yeah, you find a, what looks like a, another humanoid version of Archie. I knew it. I knew it, guys. You should always trust me. Um, <laughs> completely. That there's, no, there's no. You can't see the life signs or anything. I'll be back in one second. Okay, nice. Uh, maybe I should have brought the doctor. Says Davron to himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So basic first aid there. <laughs> To well, try and revive the dead, the well, dead virtual man. Okay. Um, you need to hunt us, Tom, and lightning for that. <laughs> you're, you're not that sure. kind of doctor. You're not Frank. You're not Frankenstein. So. <laughs> right, he's my son. <laughs> I mean, he's not. He's not. He's not a real person. He never was a real person. So I guess I'm gonna. Maybe I'm gonna try and move the body. See if there's like a the equivalent of like a black box or a, yeah, yeah. You, you, a hard you, drive somewhere yeah, in this grave. Um, you have to sort of like poke around. I'm not going to get to roll for this one. Let's try to speed things up a little bit now. It's, yeah, wherever this body is, it's completely inert. There's nothing to indicate that there's anything stored in here. It doesn't even appear to be decaying. But, but it's, whatever this is, it's practically dead for all intents and purposes. We're going to agree cut back now to Tolik outside the jail. Yeah. Who is yeah. being stared down Hannibal Lecter style by mm -hmm. the um, creature behind the bars? Is like, mm -hmm. well, hello. Like, well, it's like he could, again, he's, got, he's got that sort of he's got his hands behind his back and he's just grinning at you again. Yeah, I mean, Todd like, does the same without the grin. So <laughs> there's quite a while of well, a minute of stare down. Hmm. Feels like my boy is again close. Will be long for broken out of here, and then my reign will begin. Would it be logical to reign over such a small area where you will be met with resistance, or would you rather rule over a place that offers no resistance and could be more? Agreeable. Hmm. Well, resistance would be rather futile of you. 
<laughs> what did you have in mind? I can offer you a more pleasant realm to rule. Go on. Um, or just out of character question, we sure. could put him in the tricorder for now and then put him into something else. Yes, it's the, the program itself is surprisingly small. It's just because it's mm -hmm. Iconian, it's so advanced that, you, I mean, in theory, you could fit it just to give you an idea of scale on a modern day mm -hmm. phone. That's okay, that's how small the virus is, but it's also incredibly efficient, right? And this is something you would have known and picked up from your research before, so. right. Well, I have brought a maybe only temporary abode with me. And I will. There's nobody else in here, right? Yeah. So I will pull out the tricorder. Well, that's interesting. Some nifty little toy you have there. And if you wish, I can promise you a larger taint system. You see, he looks very close to the mm -hmm. jail bars. Come closer. So, look, we'll briefly calculate his arm's reach and stop about two to three centimeters outside of it. <laughs> but step closer. <laughs> so, he's like, just sort of his own. Hmm. Yeah. You're not so stupid. You've got brains. I can respect that. Tell me something. Yes. If I went with you, I would be intact. I promise you would not be harmed. Would I be Just... intact? Would I be who I am? Yes. Make a command and reason roll for me. Uh, he isn't okay. Do I have to? Um, we can, oh. You've got five momentum, so. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's use two on that. Hmm. <laughs> Strike an interesting bargain there, Vulcan. I know what you are. I know what you're Fascinating. And also then you should also know that I would not lie to you. If it was one of those other two monkeys, yeah, this conversation wouldn't be happening. But I know you Vulcans find it abhorrent and repugnant to lie. It's almost like you're genetically incapable. You always have there, been as a, you always have been as a species. There has been some debate on mm. But we I also dislike harming a sentient creature. So I would rather avoid it. Very well. If you can swear to me on your oath as a Starfleet officer, yes, I know about you. I learned a lot <clears> from that <throat> sheriff of yours. Very wily individual. If it wasn't for him, I would have conquered this land years ago. You have my word as a Starfleet officer and a citizen of Planet Bob. He puts his hand through the bars. Doesn't probably seem to make any aggressive gestures, he just puts his hand out. Yeah, probably put the tricorder on it, I guess. Yeah, that's so all you have to do. Activate it and his form. And the tricorder drops. And catch it. <laughs> Tira, in the distance, you see that the, the, the the column of horses 
that was approaching you just disappears. Back up on Boots Hill, Davrin, the corpse that you were looking at suddenly sits booted upright, pun intended. So, <laughs> ah, Davrin. Morning, Archie. Curious. I appear to be on the holodeck. Hmm. Yeah, twice over. Indeed. <clears throat> what is going on? Well, given that you're not dead anymore, I have to assume that Tolik negotiated some sort of peace treaty. Oh. Uh, I assume you have encountered my... Well, the other way to describe it is my backup. Yeah. A hollow shadow of the original, I must say, Archie. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, he's never a full working version of me. That is not the point of a backup. The point is is to try to rectify any problems with the primary, namely me. I did try to communicate with him, but something had gone wrong. It wasn't working properly. He uh, developed virtual alcoholism. <laughs> Why did he... Voices. I see. Probably yours. That would be logical. <clears throat> you say Tolek is here, and I am assuming that Lieutenant Tira is as well? Yep. Excellent. All, all of the uh, gang. <clears throat> oh, that is rather marvellous. Let us head back into town, shall we? Certainly. Uh, you need help out of that hole. That would be... And he, put, he puts his hand up. It's like that would be very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> put him up. It's like mm, slow walk back into town, and you see that the sheriff sheriff sees his brother. So, what I'll be is a goddamn miracle. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, praise be unto unto him above. Yeah. So like, it is definitely the God's work. Indeed. <laughs> and you, you can see even the hollow Archie is uh, like, hmm. I, I, sh I believe it would be most appropriate if I returned to my actual body now. Um, I, I believe leaving the hollow deck would be rather prudent right now, just in case. And he just, his form disappears. Well, well done, Tolak. I assume that was you. Thank you, John. I was able to negotiate a solution with the virus. Well, I was able to make sure she didn't wake up in a C. You know. <laughs> yeah, that would be... yeah, it's like, um, yeah, by the way, Everything. Um, the. <laughs> the I'm going to start by saying that the Lady of the Night is um, now running up to Tolik and basically giving him a great big hug. It's like you were magnificent with him. It's like really the voice patterns do not match with the <laughs> uh, the lady standing uh, in front of you. Looks uncanny, that, like Commander. Darren Sam. says, "Computer, give me a selfie stick." <laughs> <laughs> it materializes in your hand, <laughs> Tolik. Oh, the poets. <laughs> Tolik would just stand there extremely simply. <laughs> like With an eyebrow like, raise. It sort of cuts to an old, old timey black and white sepia picture, you know. Oh, a... perfect. Yeah, instead of a selfie stick, I've got selfie ginormous. Yeah, the, the guy standing there is just like. <laughs> The light flashes off and it ends with you know, Tira standing there with, with her gun, uh, Tolik looking rather bemused, and Davin going. <laughs> and that's pretty much where we're in the episode tonight. <laughs> okay, Ricky is uh, basically covering all my shifts for. I'll oh, now have this picture. Is, um... <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. I will have some serious talk with Ricky. How disappointed. I'm not angry, but I am. Disappointed with him. I didn't write the program, okay? I, I got it from court. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Oh. And he's, it's like, you see that breath like, Quark! <laughs> he pretty much runs off towards um, 
bar. I'm lucky enough, Quark isn't into that, but he doesn't know that. So, does anyone have any epilogue that they want to do? Tia will write a holodeck program, and both Devran and Tolak will get an invitation. <laughs> and they come into, when they come into a western town, with a new sheriff in town looking for two deputies. <laughs> no. uh, well, I think this is going to be a wrong going thing now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's um, apparently um, when uh, details of your exploits got out to the rest of the ship, which is now starting to return to normal as the virus has pretty much mm -hmm. been purged. It's it was like a, it was almost like an off switch. It's like literally every single system went back to normal, mm -hmm. like, like that, as, mm -hmm. and it coincided perfectly with the moment that you transported the entity into yeah. the. Oh go. right, uh, and Tolok will, uh, in an, in an, another scene, start working on a system that is a bit more roomy, uh, just more, a bit more power, a bit more memory, uh, that he will then try to build a containment system. Very, for... e very easily done. It's obviously it takes a little bit of a while because uh, uh, Archie has said that um, he is not helping with this within a million miles. He's still well mm -hmm. clear of that thing. Um, oh, yeah. Also, as well, there is very much heightened security around your lab for the next mm -hmm. week or so whilst yeah. you're uh, doing this. Okay. Yeah, so just build, building a playground, building a sandbox, and then building it a safe around <laughs> easy, easy enough done, easy enough done. so Davrin, Davrin's epilogue um, he is walking through the the corridors of a ship with first trailing him wearing a pout on his face and Davrin is holding the sword <laughs> and he part, they pass <laughs> Bezek and Venek on the way and <laughs> Two of the reactions that you might imagine, so, and and first is uh, you know please please let me keep it, and Darren <laughs> says you you'll get it back when you can learn not to poke people. <laughs> so, but you promised I could use it. <laughs> I promised you could keep it in your quarters. I did keep it. In did my you team. keep it in your quarters? And he's all he's no, I don't do anything. No. no. So you'll have it back when I can trust you again. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's full on. Now, nobody's, you never really heard the Gem Hadar grumble, but as has been established in the past, first and the rest of the uh, Gem Hadar the, um, contingent, they're not exactly normal Gem Hadar uh, by any standards. They are not anymore. No, they're definitely not. They have been Damocles. Da they, have, yeah, they have been in Damocles. <laughs> well, so, there was a reason I tr always trained with them. <laughs> And yet, yeah, the personalities are starting to rub off on them. And it's, uh, there has been a few comments, but nobody wants to say it to his face because when you're dealing with someone who is probably pushing eight foot tall and could rip off your arms and kill you with the wet end, you don't want to piss them off. The the last thing Darren says is, "Just be glad I'm letting you feather." <laughs> he seems like he sort of puts a hat on. Like, you can tell Toby I look handsome in it. <laughs> And so you do, my friend. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end this for the day. So, <laughs> unfortunately, it was, would have been a little bit longer, but as, um, uh, an old arm injury that was playing up on Thursday it's started to act up a little bit now. So I'm going to go and take again, put some uh, Medicaid stuff on it and maybe take some painkillers as well. So, sorry it wasn't as long as normal, but I think we're all really really tired or oh, I'm injured <laughs> um, we should be back in a couple of weeks uh, fingers crossed um, not entirely really sure what the episode is going to be I have I have a couple of possible ideas I don't want to um, don't wanna spoil it too much but yeah we, I, do, I will be working on trying to add some more bits and pieces to the uh, the game so if you see anything new and fancy that's been added don't worry it's all supposed to be there and we'll Basically, it's going to be an ongoing process. I'm going to be keep trying. Whenever I think of it, I'm going to keep trying to add more and more till basically, you know, I pretty much hit the limit of what I can add. So, thank you very much for joining me.
uh, for joining us, I should say. And in the meantime, live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper.